Morning, everyone, and welcome to video editing on your phone. I am sitting in Hout Bay, so that's not a virtual background at the moment. If you hear dogs barking or a lawnmower, that's actually happening at the moment. I decided not to um, cancel when I needed to travel, but instead to schlep my whole studio with me in the airplane and here we are sitting so when i talk about video editing i'm actually going to be talking particularly about two apps at the moment one is called pro movie recorder and the other one is called vllo and the reason i've chosen these two is that they're both 100 percent free if you can't find pro movie recorder don't worry about that you can use your, your cell phone to record but you will need to do some editing and vllo and that's exactly how you you spell it the vllo and then a little um fish on a pink background um i would I, I would highly recommend it it's it's unbelievably powerful for a free app i the one that i use is actually something called video leaps and i'll talk about that a bit later on and the reason i use video leaps is because i'm just a little bit more used to it um it, it probably has the same features but let's let's talk about uh, so while you wait you're welcome to download those two and let's get cracking so this is video editing on your phone. As Tracy said, my name is Mike Said, a little company called Mike Said What. You're more than welcome to email me anytime on mike at mikesaidwhat.co.za. And I'm also available on WhatsApp. And uh, I answer WhatsApps pretty quickly. I've got my phone with me all the time. I only have one condition, please. Absolutely no voice notes. I, I Voice notes drive me completely insane. Uh, it's, a, it's a very personal thing. So if you send me a voice note, chances are I'm not going to listen to it, but please feel free to message me otherwise. So what can you expect this morning from me? First of all, I'm going to talk about turning your story into a script, and that's probably the most important part. In fact, how you do the editing, although I will show you a bit later on, is not quite as important as getting that story right. Deciding what it is you want to get across and then being able to talk to people and project it. I'll talk about uh, recording your narrative how you can do your own recording or whether you want to use a voiceover. I'll talk about the mobile gear that I use and what I can recommend you do. I'll talk a little bit about quick, my go-to editor on the fly when I need something really fast. Then we'll get into setting up the filming app, how to, how to different things matter, um, how to do the focus, how to do the light, how, all that kind of thing. Then we'll talk about shooting of the actual footage and how to get enough footage to make sure you do it. Then I'm gonna go into editing then I'll talk a little bit about your soundtrack and then how to produce and use your own video. And then I'm going to show you a little video that I actually did using all these exact techniques and my phone and everything that I had available to me at the particular time. So let's get started from, from your story to your script is probably the most important part. And that's getting that message across. Let me, let me just digress for a second and tell you that I believe in the power of video. I believe that video is the way to talk to your audience, talk to your friends, talk to it just there, there is there's something very powerful and engaging about video. People are prepared to watch. But what is very important that you understand that they're not going to watch for very long. So I got a message yesterday from a guy in, in Port Elizabeth, my friend Thane, or sorry, in this London. He, his name's Stain, and he said to me, he's wondering if I could look at a video that he's made and give him some comments. The video is only 11 minutes long. And I said to him, Thane, 11 minutes is a Netflix series. 11 minutes is a full-length movie. I said, if you like, I'll go put on some popcorn and I'll get ready and I'll do my best to watch 11 minutes of video. Nobody watches that kind of video. What we're looking for in video is something between a minute and two minutes. In, in fact, around about 90 to 99 seconds is probably ideal. That's about how long you need to engage with people. And then people say to me, but how, oh, Mike, you know, 99 seconds, that, that's almost nothing. How am I going to get my message across? And I always remind you that a television commercial is 30 seconds. And if they're able to get their message across in 30 seconds, you should be able to get your message across in roughly 90 seconds. So anything over about 90 seconds, if you, if you at, at most, I would push it to two and a half minutes. But once you're hitting the three minute mark, you can expect to lose people very, very quickly. So in order to to get your message across, you first need to understand your brand positioning statement. And in fact, about two weeks ago, I did a ought talk called Cutting Through the Digital Platter, where I actually speak about your brand position and being able to do that. And your brand position is really four sentences. That's it. 
The first one is two, is understanding who your target market is. As small business owners or potential small business owners, for those of you that haven't yet started your own business, the most important thing is that you're able to identify who your target market is and describe them to yourself so that you can go out looking for them. Now, I know, and, I, and I've used this talk a million times, someone says to me, uh, but Mike, I really, I don't want to exclude anyone. You're not going to exclude anyone. What we want you to do is we want you to spend your money and look for clients within your target market. That old expression, fish where the fish are. We haven't got the time and we haven't got the bait to, to really to go out there and, and fish the, the, the blue ocean, the, the sea. The next thing we want to understand about in your brand position statement is what are these people looking for? That is more important than what you offer. That's going to come a bit later on. So what solution can you offer them? What problem is keeping them awake at night? Because if you can find there's a woman out there or a man with a problem that's keeping her awake at night, if you can solve that problem for her or for him, there's no amount of money that they won't give you. And then we talk about what it is that we offer them. And that's our service, our, our, our product, our whatever it is, our basket of offerings. That's, that's what we offer. And then finally, the reason to believe. So why should they believe us? Now, the reason to believe is, for example, me saying with 25 years of experience as a mentor at Ort, um, little, little things that, that give credence to what it is you offer. So the first thing is to take a bit of time and Go through your brand positioning statement. Uh, um, Tracy, if you could post the link to the, um, the video recording of the last talk, that might help. When you get a chance, make a copy of the link, because remember that uh, messages in the message box don't stay here after the chat, so maybe cut and paste the message. Go back and watch my talk called cut, Cutting Through the Digital Clutter and help you find your brand positioning statement. Now, the next thing I'm really going to recommend is that you learn to write a script. And it's pretty simple when you're writing a, a, a video script. It, it's as simple as who you are, what your story is, what you do, and what inspires you, and what's your end goal. That, that's kind of what it is. Then what you can do is you can fill in that script. So there, for example, my name is Mike Said. I'm a Johannesburg-based content creator. I've been braced videos away, and I'm not going to read it all for you, but that's my script. Then once I've got to my script, I'm on the right-hand side, I write three or four little scenes that I want to capture. So I'm, I'm kind of writing my storyboard. It's, that's how they make movies. That's how they make documentaries. They start off with an idea. The idea becomes a script and the script becomes actual scenes that you are then going to shoot. Now, some of them you'll see, for example, in what is your story, there's a clip of a restaurant from Canva. So what I'm going to do this, I'm not, not every one of my pieces do I need to go shoot myself. I can download on, I can, on Canva, I can find some clip footage, a VLL Oaken. There are the little places that you can find clip, clip art or clip footage and you can fill that in. And I'll show you how to mix that all in effectively. Um, uh, there's a clip of audience watching a video. I went to go find that. A clip of me editing my video on my phone. You, what I'm doing is I'm carefully planning what it is that I want. And then once I've got this, I can start putting it together a bit later on. So I really recommend, I'm just going to go back one slide for you, that I will, I will uh, make sure you guys get a copy of this or that Tracy distributes a copy of it, that you start by using a small little storyboard more than anything else. Fill out your storyboard, write out your clips, go shoot a whole lot of clips, then we start. Now let's talk about how you're going to do that. So what about recording your narrative? Now, it's, it's very simple to record, and, and there are little apps you can do it. You can record on your phone. You can buy some microphone. I'll talk about the microphones that I recommend a bit later on. But what I tend to do when I'm doing this is I, used to, I use teleprompters, and there are two that you can download. In fact, there are a whole lot you can download. Most of them are for free. You can pay for the one. I happen to pay for PromSmart. That's kind of my go-to app, and the reason that I use PromSmart more than any of the others is that it, it it follows my voice with me while I'm doing it. So when I write out my script, I can actually watch myself and then I can read my script as I go along through it. Now, it's, I promise you, teleprompter works just as well. Um, as I said, the nice thing about PromSmart is prompted by my voice. Otherwise, what I do is I set the time and I decide how fast I want to speak and I make sure that I'm able to keep up with that and also at the same time not bore my audience by speaking in a very slow, 
monotone voice because you really won't want to do that. No one's going to listen to you for very long. You really you want to engage with them. Um, you want to use your expression. You want to use your voice. You want to use the pitch, everything you can to make people understand what it is about the video that makes you excited at that particular point. And of course, I want you to buy my product. So now you've downloaded your voice and you might want to actually mix up some of the sound. And there are great places that you can go and do some, some, vid, some sound editing. And the first one is a, a little place called 123 Apps. That's the number, 123apps.com. Now, 123apps.com is just this online treasure trove. Of, of things that you can do there. There's audio cutters, audio joiners, video joiners, video editors, sound recorders, incredible PDF tools. If you need to convert a Word document into a PDF or a PDF into a Word document or merge a couple of PDF documents, uh, this I, I cannot tell you. I, I, sometimes I'm absolutely amazed that this one, two, three apps exists and it's a hundred. When I say free, I mean it's a hundred percent free year after year, day after day. I'm always doing something there. You can record your voice on there, you can edit your voice, you can change the pitch slightly, you can remove some of the background. But if you prepare to invest a little bit more time, a little bit more effort into your sound quality, another free app is one called Audacity. And a lot of sound engineers actually use Audacity. That's how good it is. It's open source, completely free. There you can really, you can remove background sounds. You can change, you can edit, you can pitch, you can spend a bit. But, but Audacity is a little bit of a learning curve. You can go onto YouTube, search for audacityvideo.com, and you'll be able to watch a lot of uh, testimonials and things like that. And then every now and again, I just... I don't want to use my own voice. I actually want to record a voice. I want I want a recorded voice of, from a professional. And then I go to my other favorite place, which is Fiverr. That's F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And if you're kind enough to use that particular link that you see up there, and I'll send, I'll post that link um, into the messages a bit later on, then if you happen to spend $5 with them or 90 Rand, I also, sorry, this is live. I happen to get... Um, a little bit of credit from them as well. So really nice on Fiverr. I use Nicholas Manny a lot. He's a, he's a, it's a great voice. Uh, he's a South African, young South African guy. Uh, I love the way he speaks him and I've got a great understanding with what he expects from me. I think his rates have gone up to about 190 or two, around about 200 Rand per hundred words. But I also know that a video is going to be somewhere between 200 and 300 words. I'm in for about Three to six hundred rand for a professional voiceover artist, absolutely perfect. There's sometimes when I will want my own voice, and sometimes when I'll want to use the voice of one of my of, of, of a professional voiceover artist. But if you go into Fiverr, search for voiceover artist, you can search for South Africa, woman, uh, you can search for United Kingdom. If you want an American voice, you want an international voice, lots of guys out there selling their services on Fiverr, amongst other services as well. I'm a very big Fiverr fan. Now let's talk about the mobile gear that I use every single day and that you can use yourself on the thing. The first thing I'm really going to recommend is that you do get yourself a tripod. And as you can see, I actually travel with one wherever I go. It's a little tripod. Let me just unscrew it for you at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see on the on, on little, my little image, but there's my little tripod with its bendy legs. I can wrap it around things. And then I'll talk about this little device I have over here. So I highly recommend a tripod. And then of course you want a tripod that holds a cell phone. And that's what I'm holding here at the moment. Just something that like kind of springs up and I'm able to put my phone in there and leave it there all the time. If I happen to forget my tripod in Johannesburg, I'll pop into the CNA or PNA or one of those little shops. I'll buy myself a nice big blob of Prestic, little packet of Prestic. I, I mix up the Prestic. I never try and stick my phone to a wall, for example, but it's really nice to just plonk the Prestic down somewhere. And then all I do is take my phone and I put my phone into the Prestic and it's able to hold it exactly where I want it to be. Because look, there are some times when you do want to hold the phone in your hand. You actually want to get the effect of a live video. You almost, you almost don't want to be too steady so people can see that you're walking through something. But most of the time, I'd highly recommend you spend a little bit of money and you get yourself a tripod. Uh, you can go on to um, takealot.com, get yourself a tripod for a couple of hundred rand. As I was saying earlier on when I was chatting, I was chatting to Jackie Olswang, who's on here. She, You can find her website at Jack the, Jax, J-A-X, Jax the, Jax the Artist. 
www.jackiebrock.co.za. Connect with her. She's got some really great artwork and some great courses. Jackie, I know she went on to take a lot. She bought the she bought the microphones. She bought the um, tripod, and she's been using it and using it to great great effect. So. As I said, they're little phone holders. That's kind of the one that I've got here, a really little cheap one. Shouldn't cost you more than 50 or 100 Rand, depending where you buy it. You can, of course, buy pretty fancy ones. You can buy them online, ones that rotate. But, you know, for the, for, for the starter, no problem. All you do is just start, um, start there. Then now, what about recording sound? Now, I know that your, your cell phone has got a sound. It's got a little microphone on it, but they really are of pretty poor quality and they don't really work well over distance. So if the microphone's even a little bit away from you, it either sounds very hollow or very tinny. So I highly recommend that you buy yourselves what's known as a lav microphone, a small little microphone on a cable that can clip to your lapel also call it maybe a lapel microphone. Um, they come in various kinds. You get the, the most important thing about buying your lav microphone is that you buy the connectors that work with your particular phone. So for example, if you have an iPhone, anything from a seven upwards, you need to then have a, what, what do they call it? Firewire, not, not Firewire, but I'm not sure what they, you know, you, you know the, 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 um, the fitting for that. If you've got one of the new Samsung phones, you're going to need a USB-C, I think the large USB-C. So just make sure very, very few phones nowadays, in fact, have that 3.5 uh, millimeter jack. And then one thing, if you can just look at the picture on the left-hand side, you also need to understand that a phone jack is not the same as a microphone jack on your PC. And the reason for that is that both the speaker and the sound have to go through the ch so same channel. So if you look carefully on the top right there, those two little things, you'll see one of them has uh, two little black rings and one of them has three. When using your phone, you need to make sure you have the right connector for your phone. If you're going to take this seriously and you are prepared to invest a little bit of money, then you might actually want to buy yourself a Zoom microphone, a little Zoom connector. In fact, I have one here, but I, I think I left it at the... Let me see if I brought my, I've got my computer bag here with me. Uh, no, I think I actually took it out of my bag and put it into my, into my suitcase while I was traveling. But I also always travel with a pretty good little sound recording device. So that if I'm doing an interview or if I've got multiple voices, I can pick that up. But that's, that's very much up to you. For a starting point, your phone, your phone's microphone is probably good enough. The first step is invest in a lav microphone. You're probably in for about 200 to 250 rand on takealot.com. Um, another little app that I absolutely love, or I used to love a lot more before they, they came up with a paid version, is a little app called Quick. Um, it's, it's such a simple little app to run. I'll let this little thing run there. All you do is you pick a couple of items from, from your thing. You, you click on a few things, select which video you want, and then you actually allow the, the, the app to, to use artificial intelligence to make your video for you. It's not great if you want to have uh, voiceovers or whatever, but if you're doing a little video for a client, pretty simple. You load it up there. You, you decide if you want a cinema or what size you want it. You, it offers you a... You can put a title. You can do a few little things on it. Um, Choose a soundtrack, and then when you're ready, simply export it to your library. Save the video, add some more pictures, fix the volume, boost things. It's, it's just... Let's see if I can play you the video. This is the video that was made.
So that gives you a pretty good idea of what you can accomplish in probably three or four minutes of editing with just a bit of footage and the right apps. As I said, it's called Quick, Q-U-I-K, and it's a free app from GoPro that you'll find on both iPhone and Android phones. Very easy to do. So the next thing is now, let's say we decide to do a bit of filming. So we, can, we need to set up our filming app. So as I said to you, I have a lot of little video apps on my phone at the moment. Um, I've got this one called Filmic Pro, which is a, a paid for version of what you're going to see now. It does some pretty extra stuff. Uh, I like to use iMotion. That's a free little app that um, does stop motion. So if I want to show something being built really quickly or a sunset or some scenery, I'll download iMotion. Little app there called 8mm when I want to do a little effect to make things look like they're old-fashioned. If I'm driving through an old neighborhood and I want to look like I shot it on an 8mm film, that's the one I use there. And then, of course, there's Hyperlapse. That's from um, Instagram. That's for shooting fast motion. And then the one we're going to speak about today is, a, is an app called Pro Movie. It's a free app that I do all my recording on. When you said, when you first open iMovie, this is kind of what you're gonna see in front of you. It looks very confusing, but I'm just gonna run you through some of the things that you do. And the first thing to do is to take a look at that little uh, button at the side there, the little gear wheel, which is always your settings page. Start off by going into settings. And the very first thing I do is I set up a grid. That's always what I'm doing. I look for an overlay, I click on overlay. And then I set up a grid. Now, a grid is those, those lines that run on your phone, on your camera, wherever you are. And that just helps you with something called the rule of thirds. And that's understanding where to place things, where the middle is. It'll just, it's a bit of guidance. It never shows on the film. I highly recommend that you, you always, no matter what, whether you're doing photography or you're doing video, that you use the grid. So that's the next thing. The next thing is I want to set up what kind of recording I'm doing. In other words, 1080, that's the size. How, what's, what's, the, what's the size of the image I'm doing? Is it 4K? Is it 1080? And also how many frames per second? So I always use an aspect ratio of 16.9. I never use 4.3 anymore. 16.9 is kind of how your phone is when it's lying on the side. And then 9.6 is the way your phone is when it's standing up in front of you. So I highly recommend 916 or 169. I used to almost be fanatical about 169 and having your phone um, showing the horizon. But with the advent of, of reels and uh, quick movies and shorts on YouTube, and of course, TikTok, the, the video 916 is becoming increasingly popular. And if you're sending out something, you might want to... Uh, I've got no problem if that's what you choose to do. The problem now comes in, don't mix the two. Don't have your audience sometimes looking at 916 and sometimes looking at 16.9. So resolution, I like to set up at 1080. It's just big enough to get a high quality without taking up too much bandwidth. And then frame rate, although your phone is set on 30 all the time, if you're able to drop the frame rate to 24 or 25, it does give a more realistic feel. I know it sounds weird, but it actually has a little bit of blur when your hand moves through. And that's just a little bit more natural than the thing. And then I always record on the highest or most the, the maximum quality that I can. That's kind of where I set up my... Um, my computer at that particular time. So as I said, 69, 1080, 24 frames per second, and then maximum. The only time I won't use maximum, so I'm a little bit short on memory, then I might actually downgrade what I'm recording at that particular time. So there we go. You can also then, when you set up there, you'll be able to see that, for example, uh, that's the, the shutter speed that you're using at that particular time. Now, there's a rule of thumb which says that your shutter speed should be double your your frame rate per second. So if you're able to set that, if you have, for example, a, a frame rate of 30 frames per second, set your shutter at 60, that'll give you a really good look at that. ISO, I set at auto or 100 all the time. Uh, that's always the same. White balance, I also allow it to be auto. I find that my phone is not quite good enough to compensate for white balance. So even if I'm indoors or outdoors or under fluorescent, you can mess around with those things, but I just recommend you go with auto white balance wherever you possibly get the chance. Then the nice thing about this is I'm also able to frame my exposure and frame my focus at a particular time. So for example, while I'm sitting here, if I touch my camera at the back there, or a touch on my face, you'll see that I'm able to change the light 
of how you see me by touching my camera there it's a bit too dark and so what i'm doing is i'm looking for a particular place where the light's good and then i lock the exposure on that particular thing so that i don't get that very white blowout from behind someone's face or a sunset or anything like that so that's kind of step number one is to learn to use the exposure and then you'll see this little lock button at the bottom so you can set the exposure click on the lock button and no matter even if someone walks in front of your camera or behind your camera it doesn't suddenly change the exposure same when it comes to the 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 zoom that you'll find on the side there i'm able to zoom by moving that little bar up and down so for example i can zoom in there's a coke bottle right in front of me or i can zoom out to the to the pot plant that's sorry zoom in on the pot plant or zoom out to the coke bottle that's at the back back and then i'm also able to actually decide where i want my camera to focus so although this might seem a little bit involved for you as you get better at making your own videos you're going to want to improve you want to come back and watch this video you, you might be thinking to yourself mark right now i'll just be happy to shoot a little video on my phone be able to edit it and put it out there i'll consider myself an absolute genius because you know that that's about progression it's about just getting better step by step um you, you don't have to go from today to steven spielberg you kind of have to go from today to getting a video out there tomorrow a little bit better a little bit uh, constant renewal and constant innovation uh, you're also able, as I say, to, to set the focus. That's a really nice thing about this particular app. So, for example, I can set the focus on you so that even if birds fly behind you, it doesn't suddenly change focus. Or, for example, I can zoom in and focus on the bottle. Just you can see the difference there. That's on the same app. Depending what it is that I want to show, I can set the focus for that. And I also set the focus by sliding that little wheel. It's a little wheel that I just use my finger and I slide that up and down at the back there. Focus on the glass. Or for example focus on the bottom and i can also lock the focus there's a little lock button there that enables me to lock the focus so there i am i've set the exposure and the focus to be on the bottle in the front because i might be talking about that bottle but i still want to show that there's a little bit of background a bit of i might be on the beach i want to be interviewing someone but at the same time i want to show people walking behind or at an event or for example at a conference where I want to focus on the person that I'm interviewing. I want to lock the focus, lock the exposure on them, but at the same time, have people be able to walk behind. So it does look like I'm doing a live interview. So there we go. And then when I'm ready, I simply press the record button. It's as simple as that. Now, the thing with pressing the record button is start early and finish late. That's probably the most important thing, particularly if you're interviewing someone or if you're going to interview yourself, press the button, wait a couple of seconds count one two three to yourself and then start the actual speaking there's nothing worse than missing those first few words of an interview you you it just it doesn't work so you've got to learn to kind of shoot too much footage rather than too little shoot the same interview twice shoot the same scene two or three times then pick the one that works best for you press the record get stuck in once you're ready go press the play button when you press the play button, you'll see all the recordings you made will be there. You can choose the particular one that you want. There it is. You can save that one. You can delete any ones that you want. They'll all be there for you. So that's kind of where we are. That's the shooting of the actual footage. So just a couple of tips when it comes to shooting your footage. The very first thing I need to tell you, I know it sounds weird, is take the time to clean the lens. Just at the back of the camera, just take a little soft cloth or a tissue. Sometimes even my shirt, it's pretty hardy, little blow on it. Just clean the lens. Very often when I'm looking at film or someone sends me a picture, I'll just write back to say to them, just reshoot that with a clean lens. And they go, oh my goodness, I didn't realize how dirty my lens was. What it does is it stops the amount of light coming through and also messes with your focus. So please make sure that you're using a clean lens. Take trouble to watch the light around you. Have a look where the light's coming from, where it's shining. Is there a shiny part on someone's head? Can you move it? Just by moving your camera or moving your subject just a little bit, you, you can change the whole look. Where possible, stay as steady as possible. Use a tripod. Uh, move around as little as possible. One of the really big faults that I see with people when they shoot video the very first time is you get this, this very swinging motion from all over. Make your motions slow and steady. Just it, It's so much easier on the eye. Or cut from one scene to another scene. But if you're moving, particularly around a room, don't swing that camera around all the time. The, the better videos are the ones that... Um, 
that are then as I say use a tripod start early finish late shoot each one of those scenes a few times as I said there and very importantly experiment play around go make a whole lot of go and make your first video today go write your first little script record your first little video and go and make it now an expression that a lot of you heard me say a million times yes that first video is going to be cuck but your second video, it's going to be a little less cuck to use a real strong South African expression. And we all know exactly what it means. And your third video is going to be even a little less until eventually you're making pretty good videos. Then you're going to start making great videos. And that's the progression. But if you think your first video is going to be perfect, sorry, I need to warn you right now. It's actually not. Please, please mute yourself. Thank you. Um, Play around, mess around with your videos, take a whole lot of footage, go shoot, go experiment, play with the different apps, take your time to learn. Now we come to editing your footage and I'm gonna cover this very, very fast by showing you screen recorded videos. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit through them, but I want you to, be, to know that ought to always record these sessions. You can always come back and find the little section that you want and watch that over and over again. So for the sake for the sake of this particular thing, I'm going to assume that we've already shot our video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to organize your folders. It's it's one of the things about video is you need to have your photographs and your videos organized on your phone. Learn to set up little folders and move all the stuff to the same folder. So you're not constantly looking for old footage or where did I put that? So learn to use folders as much as possible. You hear me talk about that when I do my my Canva talk as well. I speak about the importance of organizing your things into, into footage. Then I'll talk to you about how to actually start a project when you want to start doing the recording, how to choose your clips, how to reorder your clips, add clips or images, flip and rotate videos. There's sometimes you want the video to be upside down for effect or, or maybe backwards and forwards how to split a video into two, you've taken a long video, how do I choose a particular section of that video, how to delete a portion that you've already recorded, and then also maybe you want to adjust the speed of the clip. So for example, uh, you, you sh you're shooting a bicycle race, I've got a little clip that I use of my sink, I think, I think I shot it of us riding bicycles through the wilderness, um, that's actually the wilderness, wilderness itself, and then I wanted to speed that up and slow that down a little bit, some slow motion, how to reverse a video, which can just be fun. You want to show something uh, nice little reverse video. You might want to even use with your family is to have your kids jumping in a pool and reverse the video and watch them jumping out of the pool and onto the side of the video. Then they start talking. It's just a really like kind of fun way to do it. In fact, if you can get your, your kids to dress up as superheroes or four of them, record them each jumping backwards into the water and maybe not in winter, and then play that video forwards. It looks like each one of those superheroes is jumping out of the water and landing on the side of the pool. Just a, just a fun little effect. How to trim your videos, how to mute sound on particular clips. So for example, those ones where I'm jumping out of the airplane and the, and the wind sound is particularly high, I might want to mute the sound on those so that I can use my voice over, or in that particular case, <coughs> excuse me, I want to... Um, use some sound, how to duplicate or delete a particular video, transitioning, which is a really nice way to switch between videos, zooming in and out of a still video, adding a title, adding your voice over, adding some music, and then producing and using. So this we're going to see a lot here quickly. I'm going to run through it as fast as possible. Um, as I say, I recommend get hold of the copy of this video, come back, watch these parts a couple of times, watch the parts that kind of work for you. So step number one is actually to organize your, where's my little mouse gone? Sorry. Um, there we go. How to organize your videos. Pretty simple. You just go into your thing, create a new album, give that album a title. Uh, I think I can't remember what I called this one. I'm sure it'll come up in a second there. There were alt video. So I know where everything is. Create the title, save it go in, go find the clips that I want, you know, highlight and select those particular clips, tick the ones that you want to cl click on, go to the top, and it might work slightly differently between an Apple and an iPhone, but most of you have moved pictures around, you understand how it works, pick the ones you want, there they are, now I've got a clip called Ort Video, I, I can move on from there. 
The next thing I'm going to do is now that I've chosen them, I'm going to organize them. I'm going to go, I've organized them. I'm now going to shoot the video. So I'm going to come in here and where's my next video? I'm going to pick what I want to use. I could use iMovie. I could use Quick. I could use InShot. I could use Premiere Pro Rush. I can use Video Leap. But as I say, for this purpose, I am going to use VLLO. So now once I've opened VLLO, I'm now going to show you how to start and edit a video. So simply on my phone, I go find VLLO. I click on it and I click on a button called Create Video. I then go and select the clips that I want. I choose them. If possible, I try and put them in the order that I want up front just to save me some aggravation. But really, all I do is just hold them down, put the clips. I then decide how I want to shoot. Do I want to shoot in 16.9 or 19.6? Do I want it to fill? Press start, and there it is. It, it loads them all up there for me. As simple as that. There they are, one after another. My videos, what I might find is that they're not quite in the order that I want them. So no problem then. Uh, let's see how to start the project how to reorder the clips simply by finding the clip that I want, go to the clip, long press down, hold down on the clip with my finger. And then it's literally drag and drop and move them around. You can see I've now moved number one into number two, number four has become number three. It's as simple as that. I just reorder my clips and there we go. How to reorder the clips. See, there's two videos in each. Now, what if I've done this and I decide, oh, I left out one particular video. That's no problem at all to reorder a video. Sorry, just to add another clip to a video. I go back in there. I find the clip that I want. I click on it. It adds it in there. Once again, I can move it around. There, you can see I've brought in that little video that I had earlier. I brought that in for myself at the moment. And that's the, that's the video added. I might also want to flip and rotate videos. Pretty simple. Just pick one of the videos that I want. Look along the bottom there. You'll see flip, rotate. You can see I can turn them inside out. I can turn them backwards and forwards. Sometimes there's a particular scene where you want someone to come in. That for, for a bit of fun, I've turned that one upside down. But whether it's upside down, left or right, that's how easy it is to, to flip and rotate videos. I might, for example, have a video that it's very, very long. Not a problem at all to delete part of the video. I just find the section that I want to. I stop the video. I go along the bottom. Sorry, you're going to find there's the split button. I split. I go up to the next portion where I want it to stop. I split again. I'm going to take out that little portion over there. And then I can just remove that. And pretty simply, I've made the video a bit shorter than I wanted. So I've been able to delete a portion of the video for you right there. I might also, for example, want to adjust the speed of a video. So very simple. Once again, click on the particular video that I want. There it is, that one over there. I want to do that one. I click on it. I look along the bottom for speed. There is speed, 1%. I can either slow the speed down or the speed or speed it up. So if I want it to be a bit shorter, I feel the guy's taking a little bit too long and I need it. Or I can make it into slow motion. So it looks like he's turning really, really slowly. It, it's quite remarkable that a free application you're able to do on your phone pretty much what guys are doing for hours using uh, Final Cut Pro and, um, and things like that. I also, for example, might want to reverse a video just for a bit of fun. So here's a video of, of us riding our bicycles along the Flay in Wilderness. Let me just show you how that works. Just slide along the bottom till you find reverse. There's a reverse button. Hit the reverse button. The video itself will do its thing. Depending on the length of video, obviously, it might take a few seconds. But once again, I tell you, unbelievable power in the palm of your hand, the ability to shoot, edit, and upload a video on site. No need to go home. Here we are, here we are riding now, riding backwards.
that's riding backwards uh, so we've reversed the video maybe i want to trim a video this video is very long i just want to trim a little bit off that video not a problem find my video find the spot where i want it to stop i can then either split the video and remove the section that i want or what I can do is actually using my finger, I can find the spot and I can drag the, the finish back to the start. So you'll find different ways to do it. Very simple, easy video editing as you go along. That's how you trim a video. Now, what if you want to mute a clip? So for example, I've imported that one that had all that very loud sound that I want to use there. Not a problem. Once again, click on the video, find the mute button, hit the mute button. There we go. I now have that same video clip without the sound on it. So it's not going to distract from my voiceover when I want to use that particular part of the video. Sorry, mute sound on video. Next, duplicating a video. So for example, what I want to do with this particular bicycle scene is I want to show you myself riding forward and then backwards just for a little bit of fun. So no problem, click on the video, as I always do, slide along the bottom. There's the video clip, slide along the bottom, find the duplicate button, there it is right at the end, they always look the same. Now I have both videos, so now what I've got is I've got the one video of me riding forward, and just for a little bit of fun, I've got one video of me riding backwards at the same time. So just for a little bit of a... And as you can see, they also added a bit of slow mode to that one as well, just to make it... Uh, so that's how we duplicate a video. Now, another really nice feature is to transition between scenes. So um, some, some scenes want a fast transition and some scenes want a slow transition, but you very seldom want an actual jump cut. The only time you want a jump cut is, for example, if you're doing a jump cut is when you just simply cut from one to another. So let's say I'm filming myself doing this interview or, or filming myself doing this course, and then all of a sudden I actually make a mistake. So what I want to do is I want to cut that mistake out. Now, I don't want to have any kind of transition. I don't want it to fade. I don't want it to zoom in and out. I just want it to be a simple jump cut. That's quite simple. But it really is nice to add a transition every now and again between in your videos as well. So pretty simple. You'll see there, there's a little um, spot. That's where the video is. You click on that particular spot. And then you can look along the bottom, you'll find a whole lot of different transitions. In fact, they keep adding more and more. And even in those transitions, you can then choose, let me just go back there a little bit. Um, even within those transitions, you can choose, do you want it to, to spin, to rotate, to zoom in, to zoom out, have a little bit of fun, don't, don't make your audience giddy. But you, what you'll find is that on some of them, it's really nice to like, instead of having just a normal jump cut, to have them like, wow, did you see that? How it zoomed into the table and zoomed out to the guy in, in the background. So that's just adding a bit of transitioning between videos. Uh, you can also zoom in and out of videos. So for example, you've shot a video, you're a little bit far, but you want to highlight a particular part of that video. Not a problem. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put my fingers on the video and I'm actually going to use my fingers like, like you would when you're looking at it, when, you, when you're zooming in or you're looking at an angle, I'm zooming, I'm moving. You can see I've now changed the video instead of being the whole background. You'll see I'm, I've, I've now made it concentrated on, his, on him particularly and not quite as wide as that. So that's zooming in and out of videos. And once again, just to show you how to zoom in and out of videos, but on a particular section of a video and not the whole video. So in this particular section, I want to zoom in on that particular guy. So now I just want to, sorry, let me just pause and go back fractionally. Because um, I want to highlight something for you. There we go. Oh, 
sorry, pressed the wrong button. Let's go back one. Apologies for that. There we are. You'll see a button there called partial setting. In other words, I want, I don't want the whole video to be edited. I only want a particular portion of the video. So what I want it to look like is that I'm almost sitting there with a zoom camera. And while all this is going on, I'm going to zoom into a particular section of a crowd on a video that I've already shot. So that it puts a little button there. Then I'm going to go forwards. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to zoom in and move that guy to the middle. So it's going to give the effect as though, although this clip was shot somewhere else, I was able to watch, watch what happens now as I play the video. See the video starts off. And as he starts laughing, I'm going to zoom in on him and on his smile and bring the attention to him or the lady behind him or whatever it was. But it just, it, it takes your videos to a whole new level. You don't even have to sit, you don't even have to worry about doing the zooming while you're filming, which is like, you know, fumbling with your film. You could shoot the whole thing and do the zooming a bit later on. So just another outstanding feature along the way then of course videos needs titles whether they're a little entrant title or a subtitle or you want to bring attention to something at any time you want not a problem look along the bottom you'll find the title you add your text you pick which one you want do you want a background do you want a shadow you can you can play with it you enter your text so for example i want to highlight that this particular guy is mike said which is actually not so all I'm doing is I'm bringing, I'm, I'm putting a title name to him. I can then decide to fade it in and out. I can choose, I can zoom in and out with the title. I can fade. I can choose the font. I can choose the color. There's this. And you'll see now that what I've done is here's my little video clip. So the video is playing as it zooms in on this person that I claim is me. I can bring in the name. That's who the person is. I can highlight a particular product, anything I want, have, the, have it disappear, and then carry on from there. So that's adding a title to the video. And of course, you can add a voiceover. So I can add a voiceover. I can add music. What I might have done is I've recorded the voice myself. I've recorded it on my um, smart prompt. I've had my teleprompter set up. I've done the recording inside, inside a cupboard with no sound around me without the sound of that uh, guys cutting down trees behind me. I've, I've made the trouble. I, I want this, the voiceover. I've recorded the voice. I've gone to all that trouble. Now I want to add it to my video. No problem. I click on the audio button. And then I can either do record the voice right there and then press the, the recording button and I can do it while I'm watching the video. So I can record myself speaking while the video is on. So I know it, it, that really helps with timing. And I can play around with it. I can play with the volume. I can remove it. I can delete it. I can edit it. I can set I can change it if it's a bit too loud. Everything I need is kind of there. That's just adding my voiceover. I can fade in and out if I want. Just give it a little bit of fade, make it look a little bit more professional. I mean, I, I just know that sitting in this audience, I don't know how many people are watching today, 20, 30 people. There's, a, there's, a, there's an audience of potential movie makers who are going to take their video editing skills to, to a whole new level. So that's how you add your own voiceover while you're at it. What I also might want to do is um, add a voiceover from my files. In other words, something that I've recorded before. And then no problem. I just go there and I look for the particular, I look for a little sound effect. You'll see there's sound effects that you can use. They've got lots of them. I can go into my files. I can find a video recording that I made a bit earlier on. I can use the library. There's my voice recording from yesterday that I made for this particular video. My name is Mike Said and I'm teaching video editing for beginners. Don't I try and sound very posh, don't I just. And then I can just add that on to my clip, move it to the spot that I want. My name is Mike Said, and I'm teaching video editing for beginners. So easy to do, eh? So easy to do. Well, 
Okay, then adding music. Now, before I say so easy to do, of course, it's much easier for me. I've been doing this for years and years. I've been using the same programs. I've got my way around it. There are programs that you know really well. Make this one of them. Just spend time making bad videos, better videos, great videos. Have fun. Um, have people record you. Another thing you might want to do is you might want to add music to your videos. Also, very, very simple. Let me just pause one second. So all of the software offers you some free video, some sound, but I'm going to talk about what sound you should use. In this particular case, I am using their particular free loss, free to use sound. I'm choosing where I want it to be. I can split that video. I can make it a bit louder. I can fade in and fade out. Then I'm using the fade. Fade always sounds better. I can trim that video, I can split it, I can lower the volume if I want. If it's a little bit too overpowering, I just want it to be kind of background sound. As you can see, I'll screen record everything for you. So that's how you add some music. Now you've made your video, you've, you're, you're happy with what you've got. You've got the... Um, You've got the video clip on, you've got your voiceover on it, you've got your sound, you've got everything in the right order, you've done some titling, it's now time to produce. My name is Mike Said, and I'm teaching video editing for beginners. I'm happy with my video, I go to export video, it's going to pause there a second and then I decide how I want to put out my video. I decide on the frame rate. I always switch off the alarm. I decide if I want to do it in standard, high or full. It also depends very much what I want to use it for. Very often what I prefer to do is to export in pretty high quality so that if I put it on YouTube or I'm showing it on my PC, it's pretty good. And then I might downgrade one version if I need to send it, if the file is a little bit too big a bit later on. There we go. And when I'm ready, I simply press the export button and I let VLLO do this thing for me. I don't change the app. There it is. It's saved to my camera roll. I can share it immediately on Instagram, on Facebook or whatever. But I prefer to do all those kind of things manually. Close up, send off a video. There we go. I can send it off immediately. Okay, now what happens if your file's too big? One of the things you might find is that um, WhatsApp only allows a video file of 16 gigabytes. Now, I'm sorry to tell you, well, because bad news for me, is that they used to actually allow a 64 gigabyte video if the video was um, uploaded on WhatsApp web. But unfortunately, they've changed that, so it now is reduced to 16 gigabytes. So what do you do if things are too big? You go to something called Handbrake. So you can look for Handbrake. It's a free app. You can go to handbrake.fl. I think it is. I think it's a French company that makes them. Go to handbrake.fl and download this little app. And then what you will do is you'll set up how big you want it to be. So I find that uh, Gmail large three minutes at 7, 20, 30 seems to bring the file down to the size that I want. It's pretty easy. You literally drag and drop the file that you want in there, decide where you want to export it, and then you export it. There is handbrake.fr, so not FL, FR, which is French, HTTPS, dash, dash, handbrake.fr. But if you do a Google search for handbrake, you, you'll be able to find it pretty easily there as well. And that way you're able to reduce the size of the files that you want so that you can use them on that. Now, just a very, very important word about using suitable soundtracks. Now, I make a lot of videos for people for, for weddings or bar mitzvahs or something to play. And I always ask them how they're going to use that because it is really important that you use royalty-free music wherever possible. If you're going to 
For example, you're going to use this video internally and it's only going to be seen by family and friends. That's no problem at all. Use any music you like. That absolutely no problem at all. But if you are going to post it on YouTube or you're going to place it on Facebook, I found Facebook has been very, very strict lately. Um, if you use more than a couple of seconds of music, it flags you straight away and you're going to get one of three messages. One saying that they've removed the video sound in certain regions. The other that they removed the sound altogether. Sorry, or they're four. The third one is that they've tagged the owner of that particular video or music in the thing. And the fourth one is that they've removed the whole video from your use altogether. So wherever possible, use video free, free software. VLLO has got a small little selection that you can use. And for most things, it, it'll be more than enough. And then also YouTube has a great selection as well. And you can go to YouTube forward slash audio library forward slash music. And then you can use a whole lot of, of pre-made videos. Um, I, I use something called story blocks. I pay a subscription for them. I get my, my music from them. I get my images from them. I get my video for them. But then I am doing this professionally. I will make that money back by charging my clients for the use of it. It's not worth, uh, by the way, um, Canva has a great selection as well of free videos and music that you can use, download, and then include in your videos as well. So you, you might look at Canva as well. There are also paid sites like Epidemic Sound, Audio Jungle, and as I say, I use something called Story, story Blocks. Where, popular, where possible, don't use popular music. It's, it's really, you're going to have a lot of trouble later on when you try and send it or you try and upload it and you get there. So that's kind of video editing. That's, we, we managed to get through it in about an hour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video that I created roughly in about 30 minutes from start to finish. It's a little video I made just to, to show you what could be done and what is possible. So let me find my little mouse again. It tends to go missing. Hi all, my name is Mike Said, and I'm a Johannesburg-based content creator. I've embraced video as a way to assist my clients to grow and scale their businesses. When I'm not jumping off cliffs out of perfectly good aeroplanes or sliding along some thin piece of wire suspended over a cliff, I'm constantly looking for ways to help them sell more stuff to more people for more money, more efficiently, and of course, more often. After 30 years in the restaurant industry, I realized that clients the world over need assistance in discovering their story, then being able to verbalize it, and finally telling that story in a way that's both engaging and captivating to their audience. I'm a visual storyteller. By engaging with my clients to discover what drives them, motivates them, has brought them success, and of course, in understanding what their challenges are, I work alongside them to craft their story to assist them in telling it. I'm inspired by my clients. I take a personal interest in their success and enjoy nothing more than watching a campaign unfold and of course watching sales climb through the roof. One thing I've learned over the years is that anything that does not generate results is not only bullshit, but very expensive bullshit at that. How can I help you? So of course it does help that I have been doing this for a few years and I have the experience Hi. in that. That's really how easy it is. You, you yourselves can be making videos like that in 30 minutes to an hour, whereas before you'd have to call in professionals, you'd be constantly backwards and forwards paying, and they're all still professional. Please, if you need a professional, phone me. I could use the money. That's what I do for a living too. But you can make yourselves videos. You can, you can, you can increase, you can increase your exposure. You can put them on TikTok, on on Facebook, on Instagram, you can start making your own Instagram reels. Uh, YouTube have now got something called shorts, which are short little 35 second videos, or I think I think it's 25 to 35 second videos. But go and have some fun. That's it. That's video editing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it all to questions now. Unfortunately, I haven't been watching the chat. Um, once again, if you would like to get hold of me, Mike at Mike said what said please feel free to WhatsApp me 081-398-2190. Once again, please, I beg you, no voice notes. Well, send them. I just I, I will I will consciously ignore them. 
So I'm going to leave that up for a little while and I'm going to look at the, let's have a look at the chats. Uh, what Matt, does one, two, three? There's one question to answer uh, from David. Yes. He said, what does one, two, three RF do? When can or can't?